I'm going to stretch your intellect a little bit. This will be interesting. As I've mentioned in recent videos, there is a movement in various five I governments to convince you that laws need to be passed to enable client-side content scanning. Again, to repeat what this means, it means these governments want the ability to check your device directly for content to make sure it conforms. Ostensibly, they will tell you it's to protect against CSAM, but I've said over and over that this is nothing but a cover. It is a cover to cancel out into an encryption by doing the content scan before you send out anything on an end-to-end -end encrypted app. This is no longer theoretical, by the way, since the UK already passed the online safety bill, which does not specify precisely how a tech company can scan for content. It just lays out the liability and responsibility for this in the hands of big tech. So some of you may think this is some big technological change to implement client-side scanning to check what's in your computer. I will do a theoretical project to show you how easy it would be to perform all sorts of scanning of your device content with very little changes today as long as you are using a common OS like Windows, Mac OS, iOS, or Google Android. In fact, some level of scanning already occurs and we will push it to the level required to satisfy these governments. You will not like this, but you ought to know. Stay right there for a Rob Braxman approach to client-size scanning of your device. I'm going to lay out the foundation for how your operating system or OS can be a man in the middle or MITM. This means your OS can be a government snitch and report what's in your device so it can be reported to your government. But even beyond that, the infrastructure I will theorize about would actually be under the control of the OS maker, meaning today that would be Microsoft, Google, and Apple. These new laws being considered, and some already passed, are actually legitimizing surveillance that can be performed by the operating system. Who uses this surveillance is pretty flexible. It could be the government. It could be big tech under the behest of government. It could be big tech providing information to the intelligence community. It could be for big tech itself for surveillance capitalism. Some of you may not know my background, but I will tell you now, I was an enterprise chief software architect for a big chunk of my career. I'm primarily a C programmer and I've developed all kinds of software over the years and much of it enterprise. So it's not rocket science for me to figure out an approach to spy on your device and to prevent someone from disabling whatever tech I add to it. Caveat here, everything I'm talking about here is theoretical. I am not suggesting this is already happening. Let's start first with the assumption that I want to turn Windows into a compliant OS for the UK with spot-on scanning of your Windows computer. How would I do that? Windows, as you know, already comes with an antivirus called Windows Defender. It is on by default, unless your OEM installed some other competing antivirus like Norton or McAfee. Another one that is popular and was hit badly with bad press is Kaspersky. One thing you may not realize is the job of an antivirus today has to do with content scanning already. And here's the interesting factoid. It could be that some or all of these antivirus products are already scanning for some content and you will never even know. Some of what I will tell you will shock you and this is just the beginning. The job of an antivirus is to scan your file so that if you accidentally move a file to your computer, either from a download or copying from an SD card or an email attachment, it can see if the file is blacklisted. This blacklisting is done by a scan for heuristics. This is an intelligent way of scanning. Instead of scanning for an exact kind of file with an exact appearance of zeros and ones in binary format, the scan looks for predictable patterns. For example, many viruses and malware will invoke a series of computer commands that will create a flaw in your system and that is then exploited by some virus. 
When the antivirus maker examines some particular malware, they look to see if it belongs to some other family of malware that uses the same approach. This means that even if the malware isn't written exactly like some original, the behavior of the malware will be obvious in the consistent pattern of commands. This pattern matching is the heuristics check done by an antivirus. On Windows, the list of malware with the matching heuristics are downloaded regularly from Microsoft. Interestingly enough, how much change would it require for Windows Defender to not just scan for malware heuristics, but also to scan for keywords in your content? What if the U.S. government says we need to find out people who mentioned 9-11 in some communications before 9-11? Could this be done? Well, easily. There wouldn't be much of a programming change to scan for keywords. I'd just make sure the keywords are hidden to anyone doing a scan of the antivirus instruction list so they cannot figure out that it's being done. Apple, as you know, already did that. Their CSAM scanning algorithm was described as using instructions that are based on hashes. In other words, mathematics is used to obscure what the scan is doing. Again, not rocket science to figure out. Then the antivirus, in this case, needs to report a positive finding to Microsoft. If you think that what I'm talking about is a conspiracy theory, we already discovered that Kaspersky was in fact scanning your computer for code. And when it discovered code that amounted to some scary malware invented by a three-letter agency, this code was uploaded directly to the Kaspersky server. And thus, Kaspersky was the first to discover that it was a three-letter agency that was attacking us directly with malware. Of course, this was especially embarrassing to the U.S. and Kaspersky, and Kaspersky was banned for use by any U.S. government entity. The point is, this kind of reporting of content is already being done. This is just what we publicly know. Let me cite another example of how an antivirus can scan. This time, I will scan for network content. What my goal here would be to scan for any internet content encrypted by TLS or what you know of as HTTPS. Well, again here, I don't have to make this up. This is already being done by Avast antivirus and maybe others. What Avast did, and this is easily verified with my app Catch the Man in the Middle on Android, is that they forcibly install a fake root certificate on your device. Then, because the Avast software has the private key to the root certificate, they can pretty much fake the certificate of any domain and then automatically decrypt any TLS encryption. So all your banking or personal communications on HTTPS can be read in plain text. Avast is supposedly doing this to protect against phishing attacks. But think about what you're enabling here. You've allowed Avast to be an MITM, man in the middle. So in my spy version of Windows Defender, can I do the same thing? Obviously, this would be quite easy. Then I just have to do the reporting to Microsoft as with any text scan or image scan. I've generalized this topic to scanning the GPU, but I'm really referring to the programming interface that allows GUI, GUI handling. This varies a lot too, depending on the operating system or if you're using a third-party GPU like NVIDIA, but the concept is the same. From the programmer's point of view, we deal with something called viewports or a virtual window. And in low-level programming like C, we define the window characteristics like color, for example. Then we may overlay graphics over it, either by writing a bit-by-bit -bit representation of the image or using some standard 3D language that can draw lines and shapes. Then the layer of code from the GPU takes these instructions and then creates an image that you can see in a window. This is a graphical representation, which you call a GUI means that if you see text on the screen in a finished product, such as the messages from Signal, you are actually looking at something you cannot screen scrape, at least directly, unless the app makes a provision for it. But if you understand the programming, you will understand that every text rendered on the screen came with instructions on the actual text 
the font, the font, the size, the color, meaning the original input is known to the text rendering API. If you made Windows or Mac OS or iOS or Android, you can intercept that text. That's a good place to intercept. It's better than intercepting the keyboard because a keyboard logger only logs what you type. This intercepts everything you can read. Again, a very simple thing to intercept. You can subject this to the same kind of keyword content check that I already explained in the antivirus side. If I include certain code in the OS to do content scanning, I would likely want this to be something no one can override. I can't have some hacker disable a particular module and get away with it. Well, on any popular OS, this is not a big deal. I can just cross check that the scanning application is running. Otherwise, I bring the OS to a stop. There would not be a way to undo this since it would be built into the proprietary OS. Apple's publicized approach to content scanning is supposedly focused on scanning image content. It doesn't mean anything I've said about other methods cannot be added. What is unique about the Apple approach is that it used the AI to scan the images for content very quickly. The Apple Neural Engine is specifically optimized for this type of scan. This also doesn't mean an antivirus approach couldn't do an AI scan of images as well. Obviously, macOS is scanning without a neural engine, so it's just using the normal computer CPU. Not as efficient, but in desktop use, there's more power to perform this kind of scan. This is actually a scanning architecture built into Google ecosystem already. It is called Google Safety Net, and this has expanded to multiple layers, which I will explain. The Google Safety Net works at one level to basically be a man in the middle to any internet URL ever sent over Chrome or basically any browser configured to use Google Safety Net. It is also built into Google Android. Apple has some similar construct on iOS, especially when utilizing the iCloud private relay. The way it works, Google Safety Net sends every URL request on your device to a Google server, which has a list of banned URLs. Again, the stated purpose of this feature is to prevent the mass spreading of a bad link. So if malware is detected at a site, then the URL can be centrally blocked at Google. The problem is that there's nothing really to stop two aspects of Google safety net. First, is that all URLs are currently scanned and the scanning can result in a bot being sent to the URL to see what the actual content being read is. This can either A, be reported to some other agency or B, this URL can itself be modified to lead elsewhere or C, the URL can be blocked. Either way, this is another form of a content scan, this time of a destination site. This can then be collected and provided to a government for review. Google Safety Net performs another function, by the way. It can actually check the version of the apps used. The original intent is for a banking example where bank apps cannot just be replaced with a rogue version since the Google Safety Net verifies the signature of the app. However, by extension, this could also be used to stop the operation of certain apps that are intended to break the attempts at surveillance by the device. I've told you of several mechanisms by which the OS maker can lock down the OS so you can't mess with this surveillance code. You can detect if the required processes are running, if fake root certificates are in place, if internet connectivity is active, if apps running are allowed versions, and so on. So it sounds pretty hard to beat. Actually, all the restrictions I just said are restrictions only on proprietary systems they don't apply to any open source OS like that based on Linux. What I will say applies to both the Linux desktop OS and Android open source project or AOSP, which is also based on Linux. In Linux, any artificial check to prevent the OS from running because of some missing module is pretty easy to remove and you couldn't hide this anyway. 
Once someone knows a content scanning module exists, there is no sucking way this can remain in existence. First of all, open source OSs can be forked, meaning you can make another version of it, and that's what characterizes the many distros you find in Linux today or even in AOSP. By the way, code like Google Safety Net is embedded in Chrome. It is not in AOSP though, so if you're skipping Chrome itself on Linux, then no external code will run to check URLs. Easy peasy. So in conclusion, it wouldn't take much work for a proprietary OS like Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Google Android to implement a content scan over several layers. File scanning, network scanning, URL scanning, GPU scanning. Similar technologies already exist and your favorite OS is already doing some activities I would classify as a man in the middle. If you think then that these laws being passed to overcome end-to-end -end encryption are not real imminent threats, then I will beg to differ. It shouldn't take long to implement basic levels of content scanning at your device if governments demand it and big tech doesn't have to tell you. Will the OS companies, Microsoft, Apple, and Google do it? We already know the answer from Apple. The image scanning is already there. But it would be easy to start up with all the other OSs. It could be in the next version of the OS. Beware. Folks, my company creates products that are intended to protect our privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. And content scanning. We have various de Google phones in our store. These devices use an open source AOSP and have no Google on them and no Google ID, so they are invisible to Google. Check out our store for various models. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which is a stealth VPN in that it doesn't scream that you're on a VPN. We do not put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. We give you five domains so you can partition your activities and we offer you webmail. All these products are on the store on my app Braxme. Sign up on there. You will not be asked to give any personal information to sign up like email. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.